So you're basically saying there won't be a middle class, and if there isn't going to be one, you may as well be on the rich end That's correct. of society. That's correct. Absolutely. And what most, what most financial books say to you is live below your means, you know, don't have a cappuccino. If you have the opportunity, one of the, one of the lessons in the book is go back to school. Yes, but also uh, I learned finance on the streets where he learned it at Wharton. Right. So it's still possible to learn. Is it always about being rich or, or doing something in this world that not only not doesn't just bring us it doesn't just bring us money, but doing something to give back or making an impact somehow, whether it's a, a building project or a corporation or something of that sort. Well, hopefully, but that's that's why we wrote this book together. We don't really need the money, but we are concerned about the uh, economics of our country. Explain for us, Robert, how there is no middle class anymore. What do you mean by that, and what? quantifies and qualifies somebody as being in the middle class well there's many reasons for that but the middle class is not getting ahead the rich is the rich are increasing but the uh the tax laws are written against the middle class so we just got together we said we can't change the tax laws right now but we can change people so we'd rather teach you how we got rich so that other people can move up rather than move down mr donald trump and robert kiyosaki So somebody just starting out, this whole craze about using your own realtor, going to Staples and finding these kits online and somehow saving yourself some money, you could lose money in the end? Well, you could, but if you did that, I would still recommend you get a real estate attorney to check over the transaction. You could probably save a few dollars that way. But it is a legal transaction, and uh, you got to be very careful because if it's your primary residence, you don't want to be evicted in the middle of the night. We're back. Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki define rich well, look rich is a state of mind more than anything else if you feel you're rich and if you're happy and you're if rich. you have a wonderful family you're rich and this doesn't just have to do with money define it financially forbes defines it as a million dollars a year in passive income whether you work or not that's a specific definition of it sometimes it's daunting to right. say i have a credit card with fill in the blank ten thousand dollars on it and it has a 30 percent rate so that's got to be the first one i tackle when i have one with eight hundred dollars on it at a five percent rate maybe i just pay that first so i can feel that sense of achievement and progress i agree with david you know you should interest rates are important but the way my wife and i did it was we're, we had like 15 line items we had to go through we took the first one we could pay off the fastest. We hung it on our refrigerator, and when we paid that thing off, we drew a line through it. And we kept drawing lines through it. So I didn't go after the interest rate, which is good to do. I went after which one can I attack first, and I do mean attack. Robert, uh, where is all of this going? It seems that um, it is high political season to, to sort of target the rich, make them look bad. You're saying that we should be pursuing becoming rich ourselves and not bashing those who already are. Do I have that right? That's my example. If you think the government's here to help you, I'm, I, I think you're badly mistaken. And I think there's no difference between a Democrat or a Republican. They both come from the same bolt of cloth. You look at John Kerry and George Bush. They went to the same school, belonged to the same societies. And they, as you and I know, it's the political action committees that determine which way the votes go. So I, I really feel for the poor and the middle class simply because they have no representation in Congress. dad pointed out to me in the world of business there are four types of people and e stands for employee s stands for small business or specialist b stands for big business like bill gates and i stands for investor our school systems do a pretty good job of educating us for here so if my poor dad always said to me son you go to school so you can get a job so that's an employee's mentality Good benefits, you know, 401k, retirement plan, blah, blah, blah. My mother, on the other hand, and I used to argue with my dad, I don't really want a job. And my mother would say, you know, don't argue with your dad. You know, so I don't want a job. I, I want to be independent. She says, why? She says, 
Mom, I want to be rich. My mother was a registered nurse. So she said to me, she said, son, the richest people I know are doctors. So, yeah. So you should go to medical school and become a doctor, a specialist. You know, S stands for smart people, all this stuff. I said, Mom, there's only one problem. She said, what's that? Said, doctors are smart. She says, you have a good point there. You should do that. <laughs> I was horrible in school. I'm Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sitting here with my youngest protege, the, the future. This guy is going to be bigger than Bill Gates or the guys at Google and all this. And this is young John Paul. We're in Texas.